Good morning, all of you. This is Dr. Nageshwar Rao, Assistant Professor of Physics, SRR and Severe Government Degree College, Autonomous Vizayavada. Today, we will discuss about types of superconductors. We know superconductor is nothing but when the temperature of the material decreases to a certain temperature, the resistance is going to zero. This phenomena is called superconductivity. Such materials are called superconductors. Basing on their properties, these superconductors are two types. One is type 1 superconductor and second one is a type 2 superconductor. In type 1 superconductor, it consisting fundamental conducting elements that are used in everything from electrical wiring to computer microchips. Actually, the superconducting state occurs in super type 1 superconductor is at lower temperatures when compared to the type 2 superconductors. It is nothing but in type 2 superconductors, the critical temperature is more when compared to the type 1 superconductor. Actually, nowadays, the type 1 superconductors having critical temperatures in between 0 0.000325 Kelvin to 7.8 Kelvin at a room temperature. It is nothing but the lower critical temperature is very, very low when compared to the type 2 superconductors. Of course, on such material, there is sulfur, which needs a pressure of 9.3 million atmosphere and whose critical temperature is 17 Kelvin. So this is about the type 1 superconductor. Approximately half of the elements available in periodic table are superconductors. And type 2 superconductors comprising metal compounds, that is such as lead and copper, etc. They achieve a superconducting state at much higher temperatures. That is the critical temperature of type 2 superconductor is more than the type 1 superconductors. Of course, type 2 superconductors can be penetrated by a magnetic field, whereas type 1 cannot. It is nothing but type 1 superconductors shows Meissner effect perfectly. But type 2 superconductors cannot show uh, Meissner effect perfectly because nothing but the expulsion of anti lines does not occur in type 2 superconductors. Of course, in 1930s, with the lead and bismuth alloys, a number of alloys were found which exhibited superconductivity. They are all type 2 superconductors. Of course, type 1 superconductors are sometimes called soft superconductors. And whereas the type 2 superconductors are hard superconductors, maintaining the superconducting state to higher temperature and magnetic fields. And when we observe this uh, in type 1 superconductor, there is only one critical magnetic field. Below that critical magnetic field, the temper of the ordinary conductors changes into the superconductors. This HC shows the critical magnetic field. If this magnetic field is more than critical magnetic field, this superconductor is changes into the normal conductor. But in case of type 2 superconductor, there is two critical magnetic fields. One is called HC1, that is called HC2. In between this normal conductor and superconductor, there is a mixture of normal and superconducting state. So this is the main difference between type 2 superconductors and type 1 superconductors. Of course, uh, these type 1 superconductors are called soft superconductors and type 2 superconductors are called hard superconductors. So what are the differences between these type 1 superconductors and type 2 superconductors? In type 1 superconductor, the critical temperature is low and compared with the type 2 superconductor, it is approximately up to 10 Kelvin only. But type 2 superconductor whose critical temperature is high, that is up to more than 10 Kelvin. And uh, we know that critical magnetic field. So lower at the lower critical magnetic field having type 1 superconductor, it is nothing but below the very low intensity of magnetic field also, the superconductors changes into the 
ordinary conductors. But the type 2 superconductors have high critical magnetic field. So this phenomena is useful to type 2 superconductors to prepare the electro strong electromagnets. And uh, this type 1 superconductor will be the Meissner effect. We know, and Meissner effect is nothing but the repulse now magnetic lines of forces at a uh, superconducting state. But uh, type 2 superconductor does not will be Meissner effect perfectly. And uh, this uh, contains type 1 superconductors contains only single critical magnetic field. But in type 2 superconductors, there is a two critical magnetic field. There is in between ordinary metals and superconductor, there is a mixing state we observe. We know these type 1 superconductors are soft superconductors and type 2 superconductors are hard superconductors. And in type 1 superconductors, the transition from superconducting state to normal state due to the external magnetic field is a short and uptrust for type 1 superconductors. But in this type 2 superconductors, this is not sharp. Due to lower critical magnetic field in type 1 superconductors, uh, this manufacturing of electromagnets used for producing strong magnetic field is not possible. But in type 2 superconductor, it has high critical magnetic field so that will be used for manufacturing strong electromagnets for producing strong magnetic fields. Of course, the type 1 superconductors are generally pure metals, but type 2 superconductors are alloys and also complex surfaces of ceramics. Of course, one of the theory is used to explain the superconductivity that is called BCS theory, but Dean, Cooper and Schreiber theory. This explains the superconductivity in type 1 superconductors. But this BCS theory is failed to explain the superconductivity in type 2 superconductors. In type 1 superconductor, there is complete diamagnet because it will be the Meissner effect. All lines are expired by expired by the uh, material at a superconducting state. But type 2 superconductors are not completely diamagnetic. So type 1 superconductors also called as lower temperature superconductors because whose critical temperature is low when compared with the type 2 superconductors. Here in case of type 2 superconductors, there is high temperature superconductors. And examples of superconductors are that is type 1 are mercury, uh, lead, zinc, etc. In case of type 2 superconductor, those are allies, niobium, titanium and niobium, stannous, etc. These are the some of the properties or differences between type 1 superconductors and type 2 superconductors. So any subject what we are discussing must contain some of the applications. Without use and without application, we cannot learn anything. So these superconductors also have a number of applications. Some of them are, these are used in particle accelerators. It is nothing but to increase the velocity generators and transportation, computing, electric motors, medical field, power transmission, etc. And superconductors are primarily employed for creating a powerful electromagnets in MRI scanners because nowadays in medical field, MRI scanning is very, very much in some of the difficult disease synthesis. In such cases, electro strong electromagnets are required so that superconductors will be used to produce these super electromagnets. And these conductors are used to transmit power for longer distances because if these are superconductors, the resistance is zero. If the resistance is zero, there is no power loss occur. So it is very, very useful. But we know up to now, at room temperature, no superconductor was discovered at a, uh, a ordinary pressures. Now they are used in memory devices or storage elements and uh, generation and uh, transmission of electric power and superconductors are used in medical diagnosis just like MRI. 
and these are used to produce electromagnets that is also called superconducting magnets that is strong magnets in the making of supercomputers and magnetically alleviating the world's fossil strikes. As we know, in Japan, we are using bullet trains. Actually, the principle behind that is Meissner effect. There is a repulsive force between track and wheel. Due to this repulsive force, there is a frictional force decreases. When a frictional force decreases, nothing but the speed of the train increases. And another application of these superconducting state is magnetic energy storage devices and will be used as electromagnetic ceiling and also to use in transformer preparation. So these are the some of the applications of superconductors nowadays. Thank you very much.